11 14 11 14 2023 our daily bread feed my sheep series a series i do and as long as i'm I have to come pick up my stepson um, and sit in this line i'm gonna do it um in obedience to the lord i feel like it's something the lord gave me to do so it's a series that we do where we just open up the book of open up the bible and read from where we open up and exhort and and say what we believe the Lord is saying to the church, us the church. So let's see. see you know, I try to let the Bible open up, but see, it just opens to the front or all the way to the back. It doesn't open up in the middle nowhere. So I have to actually put my finger someplace. <laughs> and by me knowing where things are in the Bible, I can almost kind of dictate where it's going to open, but not really. So let's see here. Okay, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, and it reads on this rise from verse 1, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. What's amazing about Hebrews in the Bible, talking about Abraham and Melchizedek. It's because they was way in the beginning in Genesis. So we see here in Hebrews, they're talking about something that happened long, long, long time ago. And it's almost like us in 2023, how we refer to scripture when we're dealing with stuff. And unfortunately, some people don't understand how scripture should dictate their choices in their life. So let's get back into it. Verse seven, chapter seven, verse one again, for this Melchizedek king of Salem, priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Verse 2. To whom also Abram, Abraham excuse me, gave a tenth part of all. <clears throat> this is another part of Abraham that we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about because obviously Malachi talks about the tithe, the tenth, and there are other places in the Bible where it talks about a tithe and a tenth. But Abraham, you got to remember who Abraham was. Abraham lived with his family and they all worshipped other gods, man-made, handmade gods that they made. And Abraham heard the voice of the one true God, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah, Jireh. He heard the voice of the one true God and separated himself from his family and everything he was known. And then for him to give tithe to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So basically saying what I just said to reinforce that is the tithe has been something that the tenth part known as a tithe, has been something that was throughout the entire Bible. And you have people literally out here politicking because, unfortunately, some people have misused the tithe. Uh, but we do stuff as unto the Lord. When I volunteer, first of all, your time, your personal time that you give is your greatest asset. You can get money back. You can rebuild your credit. You can buy another car. You can buy another house. And I hate to say it, but you can get more kids and you can get another spouse. But once you give your time away, it's gone. This time I'm spending with you right now, as I see this clock going up, I'm never going to get this back again. It's it. This is it's gone. It's, it's gone into to, to his, the history of the world. So when you give your time, that's your greatest thing that you can give. And then your possessions after that, obviously. So verse 3, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of light, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priestly, priest continually. Verse 4, chapter 7 of Hebrews. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of, his, of the spoils. Yeah, yeah, he, he was a great man according to the Bible, but also the fact that 
this is another reason why Abraham is called the father of faith because you don't just give people your money, your possessions. Like I say, your time is your greatest asset. And then things that you've either worked for or inherited or received, you give it away. It, ta it takes a person of faith to do that, especially uh, in a time where there was no preaching, there was no teaching, there was no indwelling of the Holy Spirit to direct you to do these things. We overlook how great of of a of a of an act this was for him to to do that. So it says, now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Verse five in chapter seven of Hebrews. And verily, they that are the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Verse 6. But he whose descendants is not counted from them receive tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without the contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And he and here men that lie that die, excuse me, receive tithes. But there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. To make a long story short, it was based off of faith. The faith that was first delivered to the saints. See, the law was given initially as a standard for the people who was set apart to live by. But the law could not save you, which we know. The letter of the law could not save you. Verse 10, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priest, priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. You understand that? Verse 12, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Basically, Aaron was, was called, it, it, I, I really don't have the time to get into that because we almost done anyway. But you have to, if you have any questions concerning, you can always call us and I'll, I'll share what the Lord shares with me or reveals to me or what I've already known and been taught. For the priesthood being changed, there's a, a, a made of necessity, a change also of the law. Basically, you need to understand what Jesus fulfilled. He didn't come to destroy, but he came to fulfill. Matthew chapter 5. For he whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident, verse 14, that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. That's, that, that's something to think about. Moses never talked about Judah being part of the priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. Verse 16, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Verse 17, for he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's why it's of an endless life. 18, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness of the unprofitableness thereof. Verse 19, we're almost done. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Verse 20, and, and inasmuch as not without an oath he was made perfect priests for those 21 for those priests were made without an oath but this with an oath by him that said unto him the Lord swear and will not repent thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek God bless you talk to you soon